Welcome back to TPS. All 32 NFL teams have at least one big name player who simply isn't as good as you think. Whether it's an impressive past resume or some recency bias based on a small sample size, it's oh so easy to overvalue how good a player actually is. Here's a look at every NFL team's most overrated player heading into the 2020 season. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. Cardinals Larry Fitzgerald This isn't a knock against an ageless Fitzgerald, who's a lock for the Hall of Fame at this point. He's still remarkably productive in his mid-30s, but let's not get him mixed up with the old Larry Fitzgerald. The perennial pro bowler is no longer a true game-breaker. He missed the 1,000-yard mark for the second straight year in 2019, and his role on the offense will diminish even more following the acquisition of DeAndre Hopkins. Fitz is still producing nicely given his age, but let's not think of him as a top-tier wideout anymore. Those days are long gone. Falcons' Dante Fowler Jr. Fowler struggled in his two-and-a-half seasons with the Jaguars, but he was a beast on Wade Phillips' defense in L.A. Fowler had 13.5 total sacks and three forced fumbles in 24 games with the Rams. We have to attribute much of that success to Phillips and head coach Sean McVay. Maybe Fowler will continue that success in Atlanta, but right now the $48 million contract the Falcons gave him seems like too much for a guy with only one season of double-digit sacks on his resume. The Ravens' Matthew Judon The Ravens placed the franchise tag on him, making him the highest-paid player on the team. With all due respect to him, he shouldn't be making more than the likes of Calais Campbell, Marcus Peters, or Lamar Jackson. He had a career year in 2019 with 9.5 sacks and four forced fumbles, but given his stats as the highest paid Raven, the guy should have at least one double-digit sack season on his resume. Bills Josh Norman Norman was the NFL's best cornerback in 2015, helping the Carolina Panthers reach Super Bowl 50. But he was a giant flop in D.C., forcing Washington to release him after the 2019 campaign. Norman went to the Bills on a one-year deal, but don't get too excited. The guy has been on the down end for a little while now. Keep your expectations low. Panthers' Robbie Anderson Many were surprised that the Jets let Anderson walk. I mean, well, the guy isn't the number one receiver or anything. 2017 marked Anderson's career year, but he had only 63 receptions for 941 yards and 7 touchdowns. Not bad numbers at all, but he's not a number one receiver. He can make the big plays here and there, but he's really only the third best receiver on the Panthers right now. Bears' Nick Foles We hate putting a feel-good underdog story on here, but aside from Foles' magical 2013 season and the Super Bowl 52 Cinderella story, is he really that good? He's now on his third team in as many years, folks. Foles has proven to be inconsistent outside of Philadelphia, so Bears fans shouldn't hold out hope that he has another magical run in him. Let's be real here, he needs the Eagles to succeed. Bengals' A.J. Green The seven-time Pro Bowler missed seven games in 2018 and all of 2019. How effective will he really be in his age 32 season? We expect regression here. Receivers tend to slow down once they're on the wrong side of 30, especially when the injuries pile up. People still think of Green as a top-end receiver, but we wouldn't be surprised if regression results in him being the second or even third best wideout on the Bengals in 2020. Browns' Baker Mayfield After a superb 2018 rookie season, Mayfield fell flat on his face, along with most of his Cleveland teammates. Mayfield was a media darling in his rookie year, and he talks a big game, but he has to show he can lead this franchise to a postseason berth. Until then, it's fair to label him as overrated. Cowboys' Dak Prescott Prescott's struggles in the second half of 2019 leave us skeptical. He had a great set of playmakers to work with, and yet he couldn't guide the Cowboys to the playoffs despite playing in a laughable NFC East division. He puts up the stats and has an impressive 40-24 and 24 record as the starter, sure, but one playoff win in four years speaks for itself. Broncos' Melvin Gordon Still not sure why John Elway gave a two-year $16 million deal to Gordon when he already has Philip Lindsay in the fold. Did the Broncos not see Gordon's disappointing 2019 campaign with the Chargers? The Chargers were wise to not overpay for a devaluing position. That's Elway's problem now. He totally overrated Gordon here. Lions and Matthew Stafford Stafford isn't the problem, but at what point do the Lions demand a change? He's a very good quarterback, but as evidenced by zero playoff wins, Stafford isn't the guy to take you to the promised land. After a while, the fancy stats lose their luster. If he were a true elite quarterback, you'd think he'd at least have one playoff win, am I right? 
Packers Rashawn Gary. The Michigan product was drafted 12th overall by the Packers in 2019. Though Gary was one of the most hyped up prospects of that draft class, he also carried a high bust potential label. The Packers used him sparingly in his rookie year, and Gary only had two sacks and 21 total tackles. While many still believe he's a star in the making, until he proves it, he's overrated in our books. Texans Will Fuller V We always hear about how Fuller is such a valuable weapon for Deshaun Watson, but we're still waiting for a breakout year. Injuries have affected Fuller throughout his young career, of course, but the guy still hasn't hit 50 receptions or 700 yards in a season. Indianapolis Colts Philip Rivers we do think Rivers is good enough to take the Colts to the postseason in 2020, but he's no longer in that top 10 quarterback category. Rivers' big-time struggles in 2019 forced the Chargers to bid him farewell after all. There's a chance that Rivers might prove us wrong behind a strong Colts offensive line this season, but until that happens, he gets our vote as Indy's most overrated player. Jaguars' Leonard Fournette Fournette hit 1,000 yards in two of his first three seasons but 1,000 yards isn't that luxurious in this day and age. He wasn't effective as a pass catcher in 2017 or 18, and injuries have limited him from being that explosive runner we saw at LSU. Why do you think his name keeps getting brought up in the trade rumors? The Jaguars know he's good, but not great. Chiefs Sammy Watkins Watkins works beautifully as the number three or four pass catching option for Patrick Mahomes. He was instrumental in their Super Bowl 54 championship season two, but let's not get too caught up with a few heroic performances. Watkins hasn't hit the 700-yard mark since his 2015 sophomore year with the Bills. Injuries and inconsistent production mean he's better off as a complimentary piece and not the game-changer that Bills once had. Raiders Derek Carr He's a three-time pro bowler who's been very useful in fantasy football leagues. But come on now, five losing seasons in six years, only one playoff berth, and a 39-55 quarterback record are at least spectacular. John Gruden has stood by Carr and helped him bounce back statistically after a down 2017 campaign. But Carr is not a franchise-changing quarterback. We'd say he's barely above average. Chargers Hunter Henry It seems like every year we get the same thing from Hunter Henry. A couple of early big-time stat lines that get everyone excited, followed by a slew of underwhelming performances that leave fantasy football owners shaking their heads. Between the inconsistency and the constant injuries, it's a mystery why some still believe that he's among the upper echelon of tight ends. Rams Jared Goff After leading the Rams to Super Bowl 53, Goff was handed a mega four-year extension worth $134 million. But many believe he's simply a product of Sean McVay. His performance against the Patriots in Super Bowl 53 was terrible. Is he one of those guys that just can't win the big one? So far, it looks like it. But he does have time to rewrite the narrative and to justify that expensive contract. Dolphins Byron Jones The Dolphins signed Jones to a five-year $82.5 million deal that makes him the highest paid corner in the NFL. That's a lot of money for a one-time pro bowler with only two career interceptions. Jones is a good corner, not a great one. He allowed three touchdowns in the coverage last season and yielded a 53.1 completion percentage when targeted. Is Miami sure he deserves to be the highest paid corner in the game? Vikings Kirk Cousins to his credit, Cousins silenced the many downers and had a very stellar 2019 season, highlighted by a shocking road win against the New Orleans Saints in the wild card round. But he's still nothing more than a slightly above average quarterback with a long history of not being able to win the big games. The Vikings paid Cousins like he's an elite QB. Spoiler alert, he's not. New England Patriots, Sonny Michel. Since drafting Sonny with the 31st pick in 2018, the New England Patriots have done everything in their power to make the former Georgia Bulldog their workhorse back. And the results have been mixed. He had an impressive rookie season, but he followed that up by averaging just 3.7 yards per carry in 2019. Most people thought the Pats were getting a dynamic workhorse in Sony, but it's beginning to look like we may have all overrated the former first-round pick out of Georgia. Saints Malcolm Jenkins we love the Saints' decision to bring back the veteran Pro Bowl safety, who was part of their Super Bowl 44 championship team. But the Saints needed to understand that Jenkins isn't in that class of top-tier safeties anymore. Jenkins earned a lackluster 67.2 grade from PFF for the 2019 season. He allowed completion percentages when targeted of 69.6 and 62.5 in 2018 and 19, respectively. He'll help the Saints, sure, but he's well past his prime now. Giants Golden Tate after trading OBJ to the Browns, the Giants tried to offset the loss by signing Golden Tate to a four-year $37.5 million contract. 
he was hit with a four-game suspension for violating the league's substance abuse policy and finished the year with 49 catches for 676 yards and six touchdowns 11 games played. That's not a lot of production for a guy who's being paid like the 1,000-yard receiver he once was. Jets Le'Veon Bell Even Adam Gase knew that Le'Veon Bell was being overpaid when they gave him a four-year deal worth $52.5 million. The Jets quickly learned that you can't spend that much money on running backs these days, as Bell finished the 2019 campaign with just 789 yards and three touchdowns. They should have known that much of his earlier success was due to the stars he had around him in Pittsburgh. Steelers Juju Smith-Schuster With Antonio Brown gone, many expected Smith-Schuster to assert himself as a true number one receiver. That didn't happen, unfortunately, although Ben Roethlisberger's absence for the final 14 games can be attributed to Smith Schuster's disappointing year. Smith Schuster, who missed four games, finished with 42 receptions for 552 yards and three touchdowns. That placed him third in receiving on his own team. Eagles Alshon Jeffrey Jeffrey was a huge part of the Eagles Super Bowl 52 championship team, but age and injuries are beginning to catch up with him. He's now a complimentary piece of the offense and no longer the team's top pass catcher. 2014 was the last time where Jeffrey hit 1,000 yards. His numbers these days fall in line with more of a number two or three receiver. His role in Philly has diminished since the Super Bowl title. Expect more of the same in 2020. 49ers Quan Alexander The 49ers had more than enough star power on their front seven heading into the 2019 offseason, but it didn't stop them from signing linebacker Quan Alexander to a four-year deal worth $54 million. Alexander turned in a Pro Bowl season for Tampa Bay in 2017, but he hasn't done much ever since. You can blame a lot of that on injuries, but it's clear he's not the dominant linebacker many believe he once was. Seahawks Greg Golson The Seahawks brought in the three-time Pro Bowl tight end on a one-year deal. Pete Carroll loves his reclamation projects, but don't get too excited. Olsen only has 1,079 total receiving yards over his last three seasons with seven touchdowns. Don't expect a bounce back year of any kind in 2020. Buccaneers Rob Gronkowski Injuries took a major toll on Gronk in 2018 and he endured a disappointing regular season with just 47 catches, 682 yards, and three touchdowns. Do you really think one year of retirement will help a 31-year-old enjoy a bounce back season? Don't buy the crazy expectations on Gronk that the media is setting. He'll be lucky to be the most productive tight end on his own team. Titans Corey Davis Davis broke out in 2018 with 65 catches for 891 yards and four touchdowns. We expected bigger things in 2019, but rookie A.J. Brown emerged as the new lead receiver, and Davis had just 43 catches for 601 yards and two touchdowns. Davis hasn't looked anything like a number five overall pick, which is where the Titans took him in 2017. I think it's safe to say that Tennessee overrated him then, and he's still being overrated now. Washington Football Club Ryan Kerrigan The four-time Pro Bowl linebacker has taken a noticeable step back here. He had just 5.5 sacks in 2019 after registering double-digit totals in each of the previous three years. Was it just one bad year for Kerrigan, or is he now on the down end of his career? We'll find out one way or another, but for now, he's the most overrated player in D.C. Who do you think is the most overrated player on your favorite NFL team? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like this video and like the video, we'd really appreciate it. If you're not subscribed yet, you can go down there and hit that subscribe button. And tune in to TPS every single day for more cool videos. We'll be here with more videos every day. Twice a day sometimes. Just tune in. We'll see you next time.